I, I, I was sharing with my friend Marlon earlier. I, you know, God, God has put a wonderful theme in my heart where I really want to start in the next two or three weeks. But, but before I get there, I'm excited there too. It's like God is just giving me stuff. And I say, like, whoa, Lord, hold on, hold on, please. <laughs> but, but before we get there, God said to me, remember I shared last week, God said, my people need, need to get back to the foundations. Because if you've got a shaky foundation, the building will shake. And I, and I don't want my house to crumble. In the, I want my house to stand firm when I come. And so I believe God is getting us back there. And, and I want us to listen to this word with a lot of maturity. Because a word like this, you've got to understand the background, the context. You've got to understand that this word is not just floating in the air. It's been built upon a context and a balance. And so I preached last week. If you missed last week, go onto our Facebook page. Page, go on to our YouTube page. I've recorded it there. And one of the foundations that God took me to happened in a meeting between a man by the name of Nicodemus and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It was a powerful, powerful meeting that they had. Nicodemus, an amazing man. I'm not going to re-preach. Time does not allow me to re-preach everything, but that sermon is available for you. But I'm going to read this morning from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. Let's just open our word if you've brought your Bible with you. It's always a good practice to bring your Bible with you just to make sure that whoever's reading to you from the Word of God is reading to you from the Word of God. Amen. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And that's where we left last week. This week I'm picking up. Jesus answered him. Oh, just pay attention now to the wonderful words. Where Je- I mean, Jesus just redirects the whole conversation here. And Jesus answers him, truly, truly, or amen, amen. I say to you, unless one is born again, say born again. No, we're Pentecostals. We can shout it louder than that. Say born again. And if you're born again, you should be shouting at the loudest. Born again. Amen. Unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, this is an amazing thing because Jesus, for whom all things are possible, is busy speaking in the language of cannot. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit so last week we left off asking a foundational question and this is it what is christianity all about i believe so many churches have moved away from the essence of what christianity is But I praise God for the move of the Holy Spirit because right now he's also stirring up within a lot of other churches to get back to the foundation of the essence of what Christianity is. There there, there are many, and and let me tell you, there are many powerful messages that are being preached and praise God for those powerful messages. The problem with those powerful messages is that they're floating in the air and they've lost their foundation. And so this morning, I'm not coming here to knock any other people's uh, uh, pastors preaching. Please don't uh, get that from me. If you're somebody that's got a knife in for the church, don't come and get your ammunition from me. That's not what I'm doing this morning. This morning, I'm redirecting and I'm looking at the focus. I I I want us to look at the foundation because yes, God believes in signs and miracles. I believe in signs and miracles. I believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the blessed presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe in I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in healing. I believe in wisdom. I believe in casting out those devils. I believe in those things. That's not the focus of my faith. That's not the focus of my faith. The problem is for some people, not the Holy Spirit, 
but spiritual gifts have become their God. It's everything that they do. That has become their God. And Jesus is saying, I'm a jealous God. If you're going to worship those gifts, I'm going to take them away. And the only way that it will appear for you to be moving in the miraculous is if you knowingly fraud your, uh, 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 fake them. If you knowingly start committing fraudulent gifts. Because this is what's happening. There are some people that were sincere and God blessed them. And there was a movement of the Holy Spirit. But what has started happening now is in order to keep that momentum going, they have to resort to cheap, to cheap tricks. Well, brother, when I speak about a healing, come on, man, you're a part of this church. When I speak about a healing, would you just stand up and give a testimony? I know it happened 10 years ago, but uh, let's get somebody maybe to lie in a coffin and while I preach, we'll get him to sit up straight. See, this is what happens when people abuse the gifts. God is a jealous God and God will not have anybody else worship him or get this or get this or worship his gifts. No. No. On our previous message, we started speaking about what Christianity is all about. Is Christianity about gifts and flowing in the gifts, right? Is Christianity about winning souls? Let's go out and win souls. Let's, let's get those souls won. I mean, after all, we've got the Great Commission, right? Is it a, right? So the question was, so what are you winning them to? Is, is Christianity about knowing the Word of God and studying all those scriptures and and Jesus says, you know, there are some people who are forever learning but never able to come to the truth. They just learn and learn and input and input, but they're still empty. And that was something where Nicodemus was because he was a learned man. He had a very staunch belief system. And he was a learned man who came to the man who knew. There's a difference between a man of learning and a man who knows. Jesus knew the all-knowing king. And Nicodemus came and brought Jesus a question. He came and spoke to Jesus. And he brought Jesus that question in, the, in, in a statement that he made. He said, nobody can do these things unless. And he goes on to tell the all-knowing king of kings something that he knows. Lord, we know. <laughs> well, I spent enough time breaking that down last week. Nicodemus tried to justify his interest in Jesus on the grounds of the signs that Jesus performed. But Jesus just redirected it. Jesus was not interested in those signs that he had performed. There was something of more importance. Yeah, when Jesus was speaking to a man by the name of Nicodemus, he, Jesus understood more than anybody else that this man in front of him was genuinely seeking the truth. What was at stake here was not about slapping on signs and healing somebody and raising somebody there was something far more important something of far more eternal value and that was Nicodemus soul because Jesus was about to impart a message that if Nicodemus got it he would be saved for eternity if Nicodemus missed it he would be lost for eternity and instead of Jesus engaging now, speaking about, oh, yeah, it was cool. Did you see that guy? He had no leg, and the next thing a leg grew. Did you see that? He had no eyesight. The next thing the eyesight, whoa! And all the tithes and collections really increased in our church after those wonderful miracles. Woo! I'm not trying to be flippant, but that is the Jesus that a lot of people are serving today. And God says, I'll have none of it in my end time church. None of it. I need my church to return to my heart. So what is Christianity all about? And, 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 and you know, Jesus had many encounters with many different types of men and women in the Bible. And some of them are recorded, but, but most of them are not. Like the Apostle John said, he said, if all of what Jesus said and did were recorded, I mean, the, the, the world would not be, be big enough to contain the books. So the Bible was very select in recording certain interactions and one of them that made the cut was this interaction with Nicodemus and I asked myself why oh, he was a Jewish Pharisee of the stock of Pharisees and, and he lived he was a man who lived 2,000 years ago he couldn't have been more far removed from somebody like me a, a man of Gentile descent that lives on the southern tip of Africa 2,000 some odd years later he couldn't be more far removed but yet again we couldn't have more in common when it comes to this topic that Jesus is about to install and that Jesus is about to speak right now. Nicodemus came to Jesus and he spoke to Jesus about 
signs and it's not that Jesus hasn't got time for the miraculous I want to tell you the miraculous has got its place the, the miraculous has got a prominent place but it doesn't have the pivotal place in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 22, this is, the, this is my point, this is what I'm trying to say. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 22, the Bible speaks of different kinds of miracles. And I'm not talking about the tongues and the, the, the wisdom and the word. Of, I'm not talking about that. No, in 1 Corinthians 14 22, it speaks about a kind of miracle for believers and a kind of sign for unbelievers. There are signs tailored for believers and signs signs tailored for unbelievers there, 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 there are signs where God in his grace where God in his mercy will allow the supernatural to break through into the life of an unbeliever he, he will allow God doesn't just heal believers God, God doesn't just believe heal the saints there, there, there are times where where the most wicked and vile sinner Paul said of which I am the worst Paul, a persecutor of the church. And yet God revealed himself to Paul. And Paul himself became an agent of the miracle. Because Paul understood something. He first had an encounter with Jesus. There are times that God will allow signs to happen. And, and, and there are certain signs, brothers and sisters, this is what I'm trying to say, that, that God in his mercy gives to captivate the attention of an unbeliever because some people's hearts are just so hardened some people's thoughts are just so darkened that it if it were not for the mercy of God breaking through in their life by some sort of miraculous sign uh, they would go to an eternity of darkness what they worship yeah they will worship for all eternity God is not being unjust God is just giving them over to what they truly desire so God breaks through the miraculous but there's a kind of miraculous there's a kind of sign that God has tailored for the believer as well. It's a wonderful topic, and we'll get into it in a little bit more detail. I'm just mentioning this here because I believe that, that the reason why Jesus redirected, he was dismissive of Nicodemus' statement, but not of Nicodemus. And the reason why Jesus redirected here is because uh, the same reason why we don't see certain signs and miracles happening in our lives is because we're messing with stuff that God has tailored for the unbeliever. He says, but my children should have grown up by now. My, my children should not be messing with the milk. They should be into the meat now. Don't, don't be messing with that stuff. We say, oh God, why is it because the miraculous doesn't work? It's no, it's because you haven't grown up. Don't make the same mistake that Nicodemus made. You see, Nicodemus thought that he was a leader of the Jews. In, that, in fact, that's how everybody else saw him, a leader of the Jews. But when he came and sat in front of Jesus, he found out just how puerile and how childish and how undeveloped his spirituality, his spirituality actually was. But Jesus, in his grace and his mercy, didn't say to him, get away from me, you childish man. Jesus made a statement. Jesus gave him something to think about. Jesus said to him, Nicodemus, sit with me let me talk to you my friend Jesus saw the value in this man Jesus said truly truly I say to you we need to walk away from what the news reports are saying we need to close our ears to what a lot of so-called clever people are saying we need to develop the ability to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and what our Lord and Savior is saying Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And they'll listen to no other. My sheep know my voice. Nicodemus, truly, truly, amen and amen, I say to you, Nicodemus. I tell you, unless one is born again, he cannot. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God of God. Nicodemus, if you're looking for spiritual authority, don't look in the signs. Don't, don't, don't look by the signs that people, don't look for the sign to qualify the person. Because Nicodemus, I, I, I tell you, Nicodemus, that there will be many in the last days that say, to us, that say to me, Lord, Lord. In other words, they acknowledge me as Lord. Lord, Lord. There will be many that say, did we not heal many people? Did we not cast out demons in your name, Lord? Did we not perform many miraculous signs in your name, Lord? 
Do we, we not prophesy in your name, Lord? Remember last week I spoke about there were some people that believed in Jesus' name, and yet he did not entrust himself to them. Did we not do these things in your name, Lord? And what did Jesus say? And I will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. Jesus saying, can I tell you what is important? Nicodemus, you need to be born again. You need to be born again. There, there needs to be a rebirth that happens. There, there needs to be something, a spark of life that happens, Nicodemus. You need to be reborn again because unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. This doesn't mean that the kingdom of heaven is not here. I believe the kingdom of heaven is around us all the time. It's not for distance that we're separated for the kingdom. It's for dimension. It's happening on a different dimension. But it's happening all the time. Lord, just open my servant's eyes so that he can see. And upon the hilltops, there were chariots and chariots of God's army. They were there all the time. God is getting his church ready to be able to see his kingdom in this end day oh god for the day that our eyes are not consumed by the news reports of cnn or fox news or god forbid that that liberal demonic media news news or network 24 balanced news but god is getting our eyes ready to see his kingdom unfolding in this day and in this age like the apostle paul says if you've been born from above Set your mind on things that are above, not things on the earth. Oh God, for the day that we're part of a church, an end time church that has got your kingdom in our view. Oh God, for the day that our, our sights are set solely unto you. Oh God, for the day that we can see our king, that we can see our kingdom, that we can see the working happening. Because that is what gives us our confidence in our Christianity. That and that alone unless one is born again now in this interaction with with nicodemus let me just explain a bit of the dynamic of what was happening here because the the word for born again is the greek word anothen anothen and and that w w word anothen is 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 a word it's actually like a double meaning word it's it's almost like me saying uh hey stick around here or, no, let's go walk around the corner, around, around. It's almost like me saying, uh, oh, I, I love eating squash. And then I say, let's go play squash. So it's not just in what's been said, it's in, in how the person hears what is being said. That word for born again, anothen, is, is a Greek word with double meaning. It can either speak of being born again or it can be speak of being born from above. And so which one? Because there are translations that use both different translations. So which one did Jesus have in view? Was it born again or born from above? To which I say both. Both. And you can see it both because Nicodemus took it in the one sense and Jesus explained it in the other sense. You need to be born again, Nicodemus says, but how, Lord? How is that possible? How do, is a fully grown man meant to go again into his mother's womb and then be born, born again? And, and Jesus starts explaining, no, 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 there's a difference, the spirit and the water and the life. And, and so, so Jesus says, this, this is what he's saying. Yes, you need to be born again, but this time that you're born, you mustn't be born of the flesh. You mustn't be born of the world. You mustn't be born of Adam's stock. You need to be born from above. You need to be born from above. This is why when the Bible speaks of us as being sons and daughters of the Most High God, that is not flippant language. That is powerful language. That is the language of being born again. J Jesus discloses this, and you can see that now just if you're sitting. Just, just try and be a fly on the wall. And just try and sit and look at the exchange happening between these two men. I believe it was just the two of them sitting quietly, maybe around a little open fire somewhere, exchanging it. All the noise drowned out. All the followers gone. Uh, Nicodemus doesn't have anything more to prove to Jesus because Jesus in his answers just said, come, come, 
Nick, don't be silly. Let's just get, get down to the nuts and bolts of this conversation. So just the two men busy speaking. And as Jesus draws him deeper and deeper into the conversation, Nicodemus starts becoming more and more vulnerable and more and more exposed and yet more and more authentic. Conversation with Jesus is going to do that to you. When you want to be honest with Jesus, when you want to sit with Jesus, you need to get ready to let a lot of that rubbish get stripped away. You know, that type of conversation that impresses your friends and your mates, that's going to go. The Bible speaks about walking in the light. And, and, and people that cannot handle being walked in the light are those that are born in darkness. But those that step into the light, that sort of transparent conversation, are those that are truly seeking what Jesus has to say says truly truly i say say to you unless one is born again unless one is born again the apostle peter years later in his uh, uh, epistle he starts writing and he makes a comment about this in 1 peter uh, 1 verse 23 and he says to the church he says you remember this now now when he says you please i, I, I want this to drop into your spirit because it's almost as if the people that Peter was approaching, it's almost as if the people that Peter was speaking to had forgotten it. And so their world started crumbling. And so he needed to remind them. And this morning, I'm allowing Scripture to remind you, let these words get deep into your spirit this morning. The Apostle Peter said, you have been born again. Listen to now the agency of what it is. You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable you, you, you see, what happens is you have been born. If you're going to live forever, then the thing that needs to give you new life needs to be something that is immortal, not something that can perish. Your, your source of your earthly life was perishable. But the source of your eternal life is eternal. You need to be born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable. And listen, yes, the agency. Ooh, I get excited. Yes, the agency. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Through the living and abiding word of God. Oh, the Word of God. Oh, the Word of God. Let me speak to you a little bit about the Word of God. Oh, the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. It's not about the signs. It's about the Word. I would rather sit under the covering of an anointed Word than under all the flesh and garb and nonsense that is going on. I would rather sit under the covering of an anointed Word of God. Even if somebody, like, like Moses, even if somebody was a little bit shy, maybe like the Apostle Paul, who said, I'm not a man of great, great speech, but what I do say doesn't come from me, but what I do say comes from God. And, and, you, may, and, and you may not pay much attention because you've learned how to run all the charisma, but let me tell you that when I speak, the foundations of hell shudder because there's anointing. The Word of God. You see, we, 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 we have lost sight of the power of the spoken Word. There's just so much of it happening around. There's magazines and articles, and there's YouTube, and there's movies, and there's music, and there's just so much Word going around right now. And I'm not speaking about the kind of Word that, 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 that is ushering from, from my lips. No, no, no. I, I'm speaking about the kind of word where it says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. A and the word was with God. And the word was God. The word. You see, can I, can I tell you something? Here's the, here's the problem. So many of us are looking and running after an appearance of God. And we're looking for God to appear to us. And, and God says, no, I want you to hear me. I want to speak to you. Because if you want me to operate in your life, you need to listen to a let there be. Because in the beginning when there was nothing, I said, I spoke, I said, let there be. And it was through a word. Through a word. 
Many of us are empty vessels. We haven't had allowed, allowed things to be built into us and to be spoken and created into us because we're running after all the trifle and we're not sitting quietly under the word of God to be released into our lives. And, and when we don't sit under God's word, then our word is not anointed. And then we wonder why what we prophesy doesn't come true. When we don't sit under God's word, when we sit under the world's word, then we wonder why what comes out of our mouth is so much negativity. Break down, break down, instead of build up, build up, build up. No, 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 no. Nicodemus, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he's battling with this because his, the, the concept is so new to him because after all, he's born of Abraham. Abraham's his father. He's, he's of the master race. He's, he's superior. He's of the chosen people. And now Jesus is speaking something that is foreign. Jesus is now speaking something that is shaking his foundation, shaking his belief system. And praise God for the times that Jesus shakes your belief system. And, and he says, no, Nick, no, 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 listen to me. It's, it's not about who you hang out with. It's not about your family line. It's not about your lineage. It's not about your race. What matters is, have you been born again? How can this be, Lord? How can this be? Must a man go and again somehow be in his mother's womb? How, how can this be? And, and, and no, 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 Nicodemus. You see, here's the problem, Nicodemus. You, you're thinking far too carnally. Your thinking is far too fleshly, Nicodemus. It's spirit that gives life, Nicodemus. The flesh is of no help at all. Why are you thinking about the flesh, Nicodemus? The words that I've spoken to you, Nick, are spirit and life. The words that I've spoken are spirit and life. And everybody tries to disassociate it, like, like the gift of the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is the th third person of the Trinity, and they try and r remove it. But, but look at how how mixed the Holy Spirit is with the person of Jesus, the Word of God, because he says the Word is the Spirit and life. Don't, don't, don't try and mix it. Don't try and just accept it for what it is and for what God intended it to be and just operate in it and just let God be God. Truly, truly. Now, when Jesus says it twice like that, he's saying, hey, listen up. I'm serious about what I'm saying. Truly, Truly, I'm saying to you, truly, truly, I say, unless one is born, get this, of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is the Spirit. Truly, I say to you, unless... You've been born of this. You cannot enter the heaven of God, the, 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 the kingdom of God. Truly, this is not something that, that is negotiable. This is just the way it is. Unless you've been born of water and of the Spirit. Now, theologians down time have debated what do they mean of water and of the Spirit. Now, I just believe that very simply... The water that Jesus is referring to is the amniotic fluid that protects the little child during the, the natural childbirth. The, this is the child being born naturally. And so, of course, you cannot be born of the Spirit unless you first come naturally, right? You, you first need to be born of the flesh. And, and then once you've been born of the flesh, then you need to be born of the Spirit. And, and we have here what Jesus is busy speaking when he speaks about being born of the flesh. We ha it takes us all the way back to Jesus. Because when God created Adam, God created Adam to live forever. Adam, Adam was not in a fallen state. Adam was in a perfect eternal state. A Adam was, was, was in a perfect Eden. And, and yet he fell anyway. And get this, and get this. When he fell... Let me just give you some background. There's that God said, Adam, eat anything you like, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat of it. For in the, listen to what God said, for in the day that you eat of it, you will die. In the day that you eat of it, right? So the whole, Adam's sin there was not that he chose, he ate good and evil. It's, it, you see, Adam was already in good. God saw what he made and it was good. Adam's sin was that he chose evil. 
any time you choose evil, death is coming into your life. Death will come into your relationships. Death will come into your business. Death will come into your thinking. Anytime you choose evil, you're inviting death in. That's just what Genesis told us. God said to Adam, he said, Adam, do not eat of this tree because the day that you do, you will die. Now get this. Adam lived on for another 900 years. He only died at the age of 930 years old. In fact, uh, the book of Genesis records two other people, at least two other people, that died before Adam. So Adam lived. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. We say, well, did God lie? No. There was a death that happened. You see, Adam was created an eternally living being. And death had a work in him. And although Adam was designed to live for eternity, the day that he ate, the day day that he denied God's authority, the day that he stepped away from God, that very day, something died in Adam. And from that day, if, according to all other people, Adam would be walking around and say, hey, there's, there's Adam. Hey, Adam, how are you doing? Everything okay? You're doing well, right? Adam would go, yeah, no, bro, everything's okay. How's your camels? Everything all right? For, 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 for all intents and purposes, everybody that saw Adam would see Adam as a living being, but they didn't realize something. Adam had joined the ranks of the walking dead. He looked alive, but he was dead inside. There was something that was dead within Adam that was once alive. Now get this, get this. What Jesus is saying is that people can run around doing mighty signs, prophesying and casting out demons, but they don't know them. They don't know Jesus because although they look alive, they're still part of the walking dead. I mean, they've got a heartbeat. They've got passion. They've got, they've got uh, desires for life. They, they've got ambitions. They've got goals. Some of them, very good loving parents. But they're dead inside. There's something that is dead inside of them. And, and this is what Jesus is saying. While that remains dead, you will never see the kingdom of God. There's a dimension around you that you will never see. Your eyes will never be opened unto it while that part of you remains dead. And the reason why it's dead, the reason why it's dead is because of sin. Because of sin. And now when I say that, a lot of people that are sinners hear this and they switch off automatically and they say, no, leave me with my bottle, please. Leave me with this. Now I enjoy my life. That's not what I'm getting to. Listen to me. It's not because of the symptoms of sin. You see, those, those bad things, the cheekiness, the theft, the murder, the rape, the, 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 the headlines, the things that we're going through, all of that is just a symptom of sin. What I'm speaking about is the power of sin. That thing, that Adam, that destroyed Adam, because you're born in Adam, we, we all have a common ancestor. Sorry to those racists out there. We all have a common ancestor. And because of our association with Adam, because we've all been born in Adam, and because we all descend from Adam, the sin of Adam, the thing that killed Adam inside, it's passed on through, the, not, not because of anything we've done before we were good or evil, not because of anything, but because of our association, the lineage, the ancestry that we have gets passed on down. So because of sin, something is dead inside of you. And this is what Jesus says. So you may have been born of water, but you're dead. You're, 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 you may have been, and, and now you get cross with me because you think I want to attack your bottle or I want to attack this. I don't want to, I want to get to the power. Here's the, here's the thing, here's the thing. When Jesus hung on the cross, he broke the power of sin. He broke the power of sin because before Jesus hung on the cross, we had no choice. Before Jesus hung on the cross, the only way to get rid of the power of sin was by the slaughter of goats and bulls. That's it. But when Jesus hung on the cross, he broke through a new power. When Jesus hung on the cross, he broke the power of sin. And where, O oh death, is your sting? When Jesus hung on. But here's the thing. Just because it's been broken doesn't mean that it's been appropriated in your life. God still waits for you to say, yes, my Lord and my Savior. God still waits for you to say, yes, I acknowledge that what Jesus did, he did for me. That he came, Emmanuel, God with us. 
God came and paid a price for me that I could not pay. Because I was in Adam, I could not pay that price for myself. Oh, who will, who will save me from this wretched body of, uh, of flesh? Who will save me? Thanks be to God. And, and so here's, here's what Jesus is saying. The new birth is available. Nicodemus is not about the science, not about the wonders. It's not about all that stuff because that stuff will be here today and that stuff will be gone tomorrow. That stuff's gone. Here's the question, Nick. Have you been born again? And here's the broken state of my heart. Here's, here's why my heart is so broken as a pastor, as an under-shepherd in the church of God today. Here's why my heart is so broken. It's because there are so many people sitting in the pews. I'm not even talking about outside. I'm not even talking about blatant unbelievers. I'm talking about people that are sitting in the churches that are running after all the wrong things that are coming to church service Sunday after Sunday, day after day, week after week, and yet they have not been born again. They come to a church service. Oh, come, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Oh, yes, God's going to restore that relationship. And they're in tears and stuff, but they've never made that commitment to God. Oh, come to the front. Come to the front. Let me pray for you. And just pr- l- let me pray for an increase. Let me pray for a job. Yes, there you go. See, birth is a difficult process. I, I thank God that I was there and present for both of my children being born. I, I was there and present for both of my children being born. And it's not an easy process. But can I tell you that when that child was born, a child that was not, now was. And, and not only was a little being born that would live for 20 or 30 years, a child that had never existed now became born that would live for all eternity. An eternal child was born at that moment. When God speaks about us being born again, when Jesus speaks about us as being born again, Jesus is saying there needs to be something brand new in you. There needs to be something brand new that starts in you, Nicodemus. If you are truly sincere in your quest for knowledge, if you are truly sincere about wanting to understand about the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus, you're not going to do it in your flesh, my pal. You're not. Because you're trying to understand it, yeah, but spiritual things are spiritually discerned, Nicodemus. Yeah. So, so Nicodemus, if, if you want to understand these things, yes, step number one, get born again. Get born again. Let the new life come into you, Nicodemus, so that what was flesh will no longer now that you'll be a person that is spiritually controlled because your mind is set on the things of heaven. Here's the gospel in the nutshell, in case anybody was confused. Let me just give you the gospel in a nutshell and, 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 and just rectify some stuff. Yes, God is good. You will hear me speaking about God opening promotions. You will hear me preaching about God opening blessings. You will hear me preaching about God having the very best for you. You will hear me preaching about all those things. But, 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 but this is the gospel. This is the foundation. Before we get there, I need to make very, very sure that whoever hears me understands what the true gospel is. It's not about the promotions. not about all those things. That's flaky stuff. And if you die believing in those things, you will die and go to hell. Bottom line, here's the gospel. God, our creator God, had a mind and he had a vision of creating something beautiful for him. He had had a vision of creating a, a living being that bore his very image and putting that being in a perfect environment called Eden. So God created Adam and God created Eve and put them in a beautiful environment. Adam and Eve sinned against God. Adam allowed death and sin into this environment because Adam was the authority. And so Adam allowed that sin and that death into that environment. That sin and that death affects you and me to this very day. That's why David says, I was born in iniquity, right? It affects us to this very day. What man could not do for himself, God took upon himself a body of flesh. He became Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus Christ came because he had to come. People say, oh, well, there's another way. Listen, if there was any other way to heaven, Jesus would not have had to die. 
if there was any other way to heaven, when Jesus was in Gethsemane saying, oh my God, my God, take this cup from me, God would have said, sure, Jesus, no problem. There was no other way. And so Jesus allowed wicked sinners to stretch out the Lamb of God. Him who knew no sin became sin for us. So that in Him, you and I might become the righteousness of God. And and here it is, brothers and sisters. Now that we've become the righteousness of God, when God sees us, He does not reckon us according to the flesh anymore. He sees us in Christ Jesus. The Bible says 1 John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 in the language of being born again. To all who did receive him. To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. They were born again. But when you were born again, you weren't born into an orphanage. You were born into becoming a child of the Most High God, who were born, get this, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. There are some unwanted children that have been born as orphans, and the fathers have deserted them, and the mothers have neglected them or left them. I want to tell you that's born of the flesh. But if you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you're born of the will of God. He has willed you. He wants you. Others would throw you away. The devil wants to spit you up and chew you up and spit you out. This world system that you've been running after so much, these finances, they want to chew you up and spit you up. But let me tell you, God yearns for you. He desires you. He loves you. And when you become born again, it won't be an accident. You won't be the, you won't be the result of a midnight affair. You won't be the, the result of sinful fornication or adultery. You will be the result of God desiring you and wanting you and calling you and saying, Come and feel my heartbeat. Come, come and be my son. Come and be my daughter because I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have you engraved on the palms of my hands. Oh, church, beloved church, you who bear the name of Christ Jesus written upon you. This morning, I am yet to remind you of something. Let me remind you. You who panic because of the economy, you who panic because of the times we live in, I am yet to remind you, panic no more. You're a child. You have been born again. And unto you is open all the resources, all the love, and above all, the heart of our Father that loves us. Speak about this again next week when we get together. Until then, let me pray for you. Just take a moment to worship the Lord where you are right now. Take a moment just to let this word just sink into your heart. Just take a moment to see see yourself for who you are. This, this mystery of being born again, you've been through that. And you may have lost sight of it. You may have lost sight of, of the deeper understanding of it. But you're a son. You're a daughter of the Most High God. Do you, do you know what that means in Jesus' economy? It means you are able to see the kingdom of God. God wants to reveal His kingdom to you, church. He wants you to to see it and behold it and walk in it. Father, these are beautiful, powerful, foundational principles. Oh God, there's no way that I as a mortal man would be able to do justice to the fullness of the content of your words to Nicodemus. Oh Lord Jesus. But I want to pray this morning that that whoever has heard this word, that there be a great agreement in their heart. And that this word will carry on producing fruit in the days and weeks that lie ahead. And Father, if there's anybody out there that is not born again, anybody out there that is empty, anybody out there that just needs a touch and a rebirth, oh God, I pray that you minister to their hearts. In fact, if there's somebody there right now, and this word has just spoken to your heart, I I just want you to pray a word. I want you to pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus never saw it this way I I never got to understand it this way I never did but oh God there's something has just happened in me Uh, something has just shaken inside of me and 
Yes, I believe what it is. Th- this being born again, I want it. I want it. And, and Jesus, would you, would you allow me to have it? Would you allow me to be born again? I, I declare, I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe that you are Emmanuel to come to pay a price for me that I couldn't pay for myself. I believe it. I, I believe that you died and on the cross and you rose three days later. I believe it. Oh God, I believe it. I don't understand it all, but I believe it. And, and would you just manifest this to me? Would you just give me that new birth right now? Because I don't want to carry on the way I was. I don't want to carry on. I need a fresh new beginning and i understand that only happens by being born again would you do that lord and yeah yeah yes what i say to you as a under shepherd of jesus christ if that was your prayer and you said would you do it lord i declare yes he would do it if that was your prayer and you prayed it in sincerity right now something has been birthed in you may have been dead may have been walking around with it inside of you for 10 20 30 40 years something brand new in jesus name has been birthed in you Oh God, protect it. Lead it and nurture it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. Now I dismiss you in the name of Jesus. Amen.